Hello everyone and welcome to another art inspired shop my stash. If you're new here, this is a fairly new series that I'm doing on my channel where I take a painting and I try to do a look either based on the painting itself, so the color, composition, effects, or what the ladies or gents or whatever it is in the painting seem to be wearing on their face. My muse today is the lovely Madam X by John Singer Sargent, a quite controversial painting at the time and not for the reasons you would think. But we won't get into detail right now with the painting, we'll talk about that while creating the look. So. With this painting, I kind of want to mimic the look that she has going on here. The woman that the portrait is based on was said to be an incredibly unconventional beauty with a great complexion or the illusion of a great complexion. So we are going to start with the Cover FX Blurring Primer. I've kind of neglected this in favor of the Urban Decay Optical Illusion, so I want to use this up a bit more. For foundation, I am choosing the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation and this is in Shell ivory for powder i'm going to use one that i've neglected since last year this is the essence mattifying compact powder and i used to use this a lot when i went to the gym i kind of took a break due to health issues and i've not used it in a while but it's a very nice mattifying brightening sort of powder so i really want to revisit it also, underneath the foundation, I'm not going to use any highlighter because she doesn't seem to have like highlighter on fleek, but I do want a natural sort of glow. So I'm going to grab the e.l.f. Glow Lotion and apply it to the high points of my cheeks. Moreover, to be even more flawless and not show that I cannot get a good night's sleep to save my life, I'm going to grab the Catrice One Drop Coverage Weightless Concealer and this one is in 010 Light Beige. I'll also want to carve out a bit of my jawline and my cheekbones, so I'm going to use the Revolution Renaissance Glow Duo. Okay, let me... Okay, here it is, just so you can see it. And I'm going to use this half, not the highlighter. This is a really nice, warmer toned contour, very subtle, very buildable, but it will just give the illusion of a bit more defined face. I'm going to use the Milani eyeshadow primer on my eyes. This is a classic, everybody loves it. For me, it was kind of a... Um, I, I needed to learn to love it and I needed the product to be a bit older for me to start loving this because I didn't like the texture at first. For her brows, I'm going to use the Catrice. It won't focus, but this is basically just a brow pencil and it's very skinny and thin. It's the Slimmatic Ultra Precise. For her eyes, I am going to use the Brown Sugar by Colourpop. I'm sorry, the packaging is absolutely disgusting. If you look a bit at her eyes, you will notice a certain darkness. Not very much, she doesn't have a smoky eye, but it does seem like her lids are darker than the rest of her face. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Chai... Jamocha, sorrel, and henna, and then add a bit of saute in the middle. This is the Maybelline Snapscara, and I really like this because it's very easy to take off, but it mostly lengthens, doesn't give a lot of volume. Finally, for her lips, she seems to have some red lips going on, or at least a darker color, so I'm going to use the NARS Lip Pencil in Cruella, which is a lovely color, but I've not been into red lipstick as much lately, so I've not used it as much. This is how the color looks like. This has been it. This has been the Shop My Stash. Let's get on to the rest of the video and the actual look itself. Hey everyone! Welcome to another art-inspired Shop My Stash. Let's just get into it. I am first going to prime and I'm going to use the Cover FX blurring primer because the painting subject Madame Axe or actually her real name was Virginie Gautreaux 
was said to be quite a an unconventional beauty she had apparently a really nice complexion so I really kind of want to blur out my pores my imperfections I fear I won't be able to really do her skin justice because mine is currently uh, disrespecting me I'm in that wonderful time of the month where I just kind of want to tie my ovaries in a sailor's knot and just be done with it throw my uterus out the window if possible but tell you a bit of the subject of the painting first so Virginie Gatro was the Paris Hilton of the 18th century I think because she was said to be a socialite so a professional beauty they used to call her so someone who was incredibly beautiful incredibly entertaining I'm going to grab the elf glow lotion and that was able to basically make herself well liked just by presence alone and well at the time as a woman what option did you really have you either perished in obscurity as someone's housewife delegated to popping out children or you could be a professional beauty and be involved in numerous scandals just as Virginie was. I applied the primer just on the top parts of my face. I don't think the painting has like highlighter on fleek but I still want a bit of glow. Next I'm going to color correct um because i have some zits so we need to fix that of course half of the population was enamored with mrs gatrol starting with her husband of course and ending with the rest of the men in her circle she was rumored to have had quite a bit of infidelity going on which you know it happened in Victoria times, apparently everybody was sleeping with everybody else. And the uh, painter, John Singer Sargent, was absolutely fascinated with her, just like the rest of the men in her circle. I'm going to continue with the Milani eyeshadow primer. He decided to paint her, although she wasn't a very docile subject. He often complained about her aloofness and her laziness, her... Um, Flitfulness, like she wouldn't really sit still, she would get bored during sessions, she would uh, find previous arrangements, other commitments. He had a couple of sketches that never got anywhere because basically she had no patience to sit to have her portrait taken. I'm going to continue with the Wet n Wild stick foundation. This is new actually. I don't know how long lasting it is i've just used it to film a couple of times but so far i really really enjoy the finish of it i'm going to start um center of the face then a bit lower where i need more coverage and then spread it out but he eventually did manage to finish a painting of her and he said that quote this might be the finest thing that i have ever done and it is a really beautiful work of art for a couple of reasons actually not a couple a lot so first of all a painting is painted in the chiaroscuro style which means that the background is very dark the clothes are dark usually too and then the only thing that is in the light and painted in light tones is the subject itself their skin their features maybe an article of clothing that the painter really wanted to showcase I'm going to take a damp beauty sponge and just just pat it all over my face just to make sure that the product sunk in really good I'm not really loving this wet and wild foundation brush I think I need to try another Anyway, so the style of painting is exquisite and of course the skill is very a uh, high level of painting skill. Like there is just a seamlessness in the blend blending of the brush strokes. Her skin is beautifully painted, just so pale and luminous without looking ghastly. And then there's also the pose which was quite unconventional at the time. So she is 
facing the viewer with her body, which is in a quite suggestive pose, suggestive for the time. For us, it's like not even PG for 13, it's like G-weighted. And then her head is in a profile. And you know, I'm happy that I, I had to refilm this. Initially, I filmed this and I used the foundation that I usually use very sheared out and when you use foundations very sheared out You don't particularly notice when the undertone is wrong. I mean as long as it's okay-ish it will it will pass but I Tried to go full coverage with it and I was uh, I look like a cloud. It was so yellow But I'm happy that I had to refilm this because it gave me a bit more time to go down a deep Wikipedia rabbit hole related to this painting and lonely Wikipedia art essays and everything so the pose is really interesting and I should move on with the Makeup before telling you I'm going to use the SS mattifying powder I'm going to grab a powder brush and just buff it into the skin in circular motions. The interest of the pose is that it kind of expresses wom the woman's desire, at least mine as well, so I'm not sure about you, but a very typically feminine desire to be in the center of attention without being the center of attention, if you will. So being both forward but retreated, being admired but not touched, admired from afar. Kind of like I want people to think that I am beautiful but I don't want any person that thinks that I am beautiful to get in my space, in my bubble. I want to be admired but I don't want that ab admiration to touch me more than the abstract knowledge that I am admired. That is expressed by the front-facing sensual body and the profile, which she, she's not looking you in the eye, she's not inviting you in, she's just existing. You admire her, but she does not acknowledge you directly. Going to take the um, Catrice Wonder Up Coverage Concealer and start working on my uh, horrendous under eyes and you don't really don't need too much of this it was an unconventional painting at the time the pose was unconventional as i said while also be like it was very sensual in an aristocratic cold sense of way because you would see the beautiful dress the beautiful form of her body without any actual nudity or lewdness beauty in form as opposed to beauty in nudity admiring a person or a thing as being beautiful for how it is constructed for the features that it has and not for its ability to instinct instinctually sexually aroused kind of like the difference between seeing the silhouette of a woman as opposed to seeing a full frontal, frontal nude of a woman, leaving something a bit to the imagination. Setting my under eyes with my trusty Nabla close-up powder. Another unusual thing was her dress. And people were quite, quite scandalized by the fact that the dress was very form-fitting and that there was quite a very deep cleavage to it. So, People called it indecent because, let's face it, Victorian people were fucking prudes. However, I read in another essay that it might have been also the element of the fact that a lot of paintings were either portraits where the clothes were at the forefront, so the clothes, the detail in the clothing, the lace, the beads, the jewelry, the colors, everything else, eclipsed the portrait of a woman so it wasn't more so the portrait of the woman as is but rather the woman as her how she appeared to the world as an example of her richness of her nobility and some argued that the painting was making the statement of Mrs. Virginie Gautreaux is beautiful as she is without any decorations and accoutrements versus the many other women that had to be painted with 
a lot of things to detract from their plain appearance. Going to take the contour part in the Makeup Revolution Bronze Duo. Of course, this could be used as bronzer, but she's not she, she's not seeing a lot of sun, so we're just going into the hollows of the cheeks with it. So you had uh, a mix of elements, the plunging neckline, the unusual pose facing away from the viewer, as I said, kind of giving that impression of a woman that wants to be admired but not touched, where she is beautiful to be beautiful, not beautiful to be an object of satisfaction. The painting caused quite a scandal when it was exposed at the Paris Salon for those reasons and for the fact that, as I said, it didn't really quite fit with the style at the time and uh, at the time art schools and art expositions were quite elitist so if you didn't follow their rules, their canons, then um, you were fucked, basically going to take the brown sugar palette and I'm going to first apply chai, then jamocha, then sorrel and henna all in order from light to dark or as a wash all over the lid and the darker they get the less they will cover so chai would cover all of this portion entirely, jamocha the entire lid and then the others just lower surface because I want to kind of want to mimic that sheen of darkness that she has so unfortunately despite John Singer Sargent's hopes that that painting would basically be his shot to fame it kind of brought him a lot of misery and shame to both him and Madame Gatro. So he kind of retreated out of the Paris art life for a while and then found more success when he moved away from France. And Madame Gatrol, of course, like any socialite, survived all scandals and returned to be painted again by more people. Another interesting fact is that the dress wasn't originally painted like you see it there. It was, it had a strap that almost fell over, so a strap that was kind of to her shoulder and somebody said that with a little effort, the dam, the lady, would be free, which is quite a contrast, as I said, to that cold, aloof pose. Singer Sargent wanted to avoid more scandals, he repainted it and he put the strap on her shoulder. I'm now going to take the shade Saute, so this silver top shimmer, and I'm going to put it right in the middle, just a bit of luminosity. I've been actually wearing this eye look a lot at work ever since I first filmed this video because I really like how fast and easy it was. And it's almost a bit effortless, really. Going to take Sorel again on a fluffy brush and I'm going to add it to the lower lash line. And just blend it with a, br a clean brush below. Time for brows. Uh, taking, I'm going to take the Catrice Slimmatic that I mentioned earlier and just define the arch a bit. It's a really nice ashy brown shade, so it's not too warm. I'm adding a bit of the Snap Scarab, but just on the bottom lashes. I don't want that dull eye effect. I just want something a bit more feline, more understated as a shape. So just the top lashes with a focus on the edge. 
the outer edge I mean and building it up I really like this mascara because you can easily build up the tip of the lash after it dried down a bit so you can get really really long lashes but if you want volume this this one is not for you and now we are going to do the lips we are going to forgo blush she likes to use lavender powder and if you look at the painting the only kind of rosy tone you can see on her face are actually her ears because well powder doesn't really go on the ears you know so i'm not going to use blush i'm going to be honest i'm feeling a little flat i'm a blush maven but it is what it is i'm going to go on the lips and i'm going to use the nars cruella which i feel is a classic my friend Mariam A was kind enough to gift this to me alongside a lot of notoriously morbid pigments and I've been really enjoying it but like about a bit of MAC Fix Plus and just spray it all over the face just to finish up the powders and make them melt a bit more into my skin and I decanted it in the NYX dewy finish because I like the spritzer on this one much better. I feel that the the Wet n Wild stick foundation it just looks beautiful on my cheeks, chin area, mouth area, but on my nose it feels that it has kind of like shown every little strand of hair and pore, which I don't appreciate. So next time I use that, I'll just have to avoid that area and use concealer or something else yeah this is the final look i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you've got any painting suggestions let me know thank you guys so much for watching you go ahead have a wonderful evening morning second breakfast whatever it is bye